Hello again and welcome back. I am Jared Case, curator of film exhibitions at the Dryden Theater and the George Eastman Museum with another streaming recommendation. And I'm so very pleased to be joined by another of my classmates from the Al Jeffrey Selznick School of Film Preservation from the graduating class of 2002. From the Korean Film Archive, please, please welcome Sung Ji Oh. Hey Sung Ji. Hi everyone. Wow. It has been a really long time. So we graduated 2002, right? So it's been almost 20 years, two decades. So I really can't believe this, just time flies. I know, and we, we both look exactly the same as we did when we graduated. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> it's so wonderful to see you again after all of these years. And thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us today for this conversation, especially over the, the, the time difference that we have. Yes. Uh, so can you tell us about your title and about your position at the Cinematheque? Well, I'm, I'm a curator at the Korean Film Archive, actually one of the curators. And currently I work at the research and curating team. And my team deals with two theaters and one museum. We have a small museum and publication like a books and Broadway's DVDs and, and film lecture. So my main job is film programming for two theaters. And uh, how has the pandemic affected your ability to keep the Cinematheque open? Uh, had, are there any new procedures that you've put in place? Well, actually a lot has changed. Uh, last year and when the COVID-19 began to spread out, I think it was around late February. So we had to close theaters and museum and library. And since we are a public institution and supervised by Minister of Culture Korea, and we had to follow the government guard. So I think, uh, but I, I think I must say this and we haven't had any lockdown here. So commercial theaters and shops had never closed here. But however, we have a very strict rule and we have to wear masks all the time, see my mask. <laughs> yeah. and, and also this uh, temperature check. So when you enter the building, there, there's always this uh, temperature scanner so this scanner just checks your temperature. Uh, but the reason we had to close so often last year because just like, like I said, we, we are a public institution. So if there are too many newly confirmed cases, then we have to close our theater. And if there are not many newly cases, then we are allowed to open the theater. So it was really confusing and because we never can expect when we can open the theater. So that was really big problem. But luckily, since mid-December, and we have been running our theaters again. Well, thanks God. But only 30% of our sets. So uh, the biggest theater is 320 sets. So now we open only 100 sets to public. And so around March last year, and my director, she asked us to develop more sophisticated online programs. So actually, we started our online streaming service in 2007, quite early right. uh, compared to other institutions. So we launched our online platform, which is called KMDB, Korean Movie Database. You know, sounds like a IMDB. Right. So with Korean movies, which were already public domain then, and we've been trying to put more Korean movies every year. Uh, of course, we clear copyright. And so last year, uh, when we started our uh, this sophisticated online program, we had more than 300 movies already. But the problem wow. was all Korean movies. But you know, Korean audience, they are quite demanding. They just don't want to watch the only Korean movies. They want to enjoy international movies. So we really worked hard to get these international movies. So. Mm, Last year, we had more than 25 programs for KMDB and, and about 50 video contents for YouTube channel. So we show Taiwanese, Japanese, American dependent films on our online. Oh, by the way, in our theaters and museum and online streaming, everything just free here. So we don't charge any money. <laughs> well, we can't quite get away with that. We still have a mm -hmm. budget that we have to deal with. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so, in your, in your job, is there anything that you learned at the Selznick School that you still use on a day-to-day -day basis? Oh, actually, for answering this question, can I tell you how I got my job at the Korean Film Archive? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I got my job because I graduated from the Celtic school. So in two thousand in two thousand two, and uh, the Fiat Congress took place in Seoul. So it was April. So I took one week vacation at that time to attend the Fiat Congress in Seoul, and I asked Paolo. <laughs> to introduce me to the director of the Korean Film Archive, you know, and Paolo, he was very influential in the Fiat community at the time. So he really introduced me to the director of the Korean Film Archive. And then a person who's in charge of human resource, mm -hmm. he said, and I, I could send my resume to the archive. So I did it. So <laughs> I think we graduated in July, right? So I right. got my job in September. So I was very lucky. And I think that the reason they wanted to hire me was that I was the first person to, first person who started in film preservation abroad. Maybe that's why oh. they want, yeah, they want, wanted me. But actually, I don't know if there is anything I learned at the surgical school that I still use in my job because when we started in 2002, just everything was about films. Mm -hmm. We we didn't we didn't learn anything about the digital. So, but I really appreciate the things we shared and how can I put it, fellowship. Yeah. So yeah. I was so happy to see Heather and Chris a couple of times in Fiat Congress. Now I also met Sonia one time and when I visited the BFI. So I'm very proud that I'm one of the great Sergi uh, graduate. I'm very proud of our entire class and, and what we've done and yes. all the positions that we hold all across the world. It's one yeah, of the I think we've been doing really great. Yeah, very happy. Mm -hmm. So you suggested that we talk about a film that has been posted on YouTube. As you said, uh, the COFA has been putting many of these online uh, where there's more than 200 that I saw of the classic Korean feature films available for free for anyone across the world to watch. So mm -hmm. can you tell me more about that project? Yes, uh, but can I show you how to use this? And it's really oh, easy. Sure. So you go to YouTube and just type Korean Film Archive. Then, well, I'm not sure you can see clearly. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, then you just click the Korean Classic Film. And there you are. We, we have put more than uh, 200 movies here. Actually, we have two uh, YouTube channels and this is our Korean classic film channel. So you just click. And there's a... Yes, so there's the English subtitles. Right, yeah, that, that's okay. great for access, that's wonderful. Yes, and so we launched our YouTube channel in 2012. Uh, actually, we made a contract with Google uh, in December 2011. And Google supported English subtitles for about 70 Korean movies and the archive clear copyrights. So since then, every year we try to introduce more Korean movies with English subtitles. And some movies have uh, Italian subtitles too because there's a, this uh, Korean cinema lover in Italy and he <laughs> make Italian subtitles and just he just sending us uh, for free. Right. So some movies has Italian subtitles too. Um, but however, when we started this project, I had really mixed feelings because I strongly believe that people should watch movies in theater, not on this small computer screen. But more than 60% of people who watch Korean movies on our YouTube channel are outside of Korea. So that means uh, this online streaming service indeed has been promoting Korean classic films in our restoration works. Well, now I'm one of those people that 
watches Korean films outside of Korea <laughs> as well. <laughs> to you too. Because you, you chose uh, a film that translates in English to A Bloodthirsty Killer, which is mm-hmm. certainly an appropriate title for the film. So can you tell us a little bit about the film and, and why you chose it? Yeah, actually this film is really interesting. So I show you some clips, but I, um, it is a mixture of vampire story and Edgar Allan Poe's Black Cat. And so there's a, actually there's a four people. So there's a, this happily married couple who live with husband, mother and wife, distant relatives. So this mother is so jealous of her son's wife. And the, uh, so she eventually poisoned her with the help of the, uh, the wife's relative who is also jealous about this couple. So while this wife was dying, she asked a cat to drink her blood and to revenge. Then her ghost reincarnated in the cat and this cat tried to revenge. So it's kind of a revenge story. It's a really entertaining movie. Okay, that's a <laughs> lot of blood. <laughs> that, that's one of my favorite effects is the, the melting painting. Mm-hmm. How they did that. That was that's near the beginning of the film and it just really sets the tone for the rest. Oh of yes. It. <laughs> it's, but I think the interesting point of this movie is this uh, three female characters who express their own desire, you know. So there are this mother who sleeps with this a young doctor and kills her daughter-in-law because uh, for her own sake. And then this wife's uh, distant relative and she wants to take over this house. And there is this wife. Actually, this wife, uh, in the beginning, she was quite obedient. But after she was killed and reincarnated in a cat, suddenly she tries to seduce a man. And then after she just uh, kills this man. So there was really interesting. And, and, but unlike uh, very strong female characters, 
male characters are good for nothing in this movie. So I found it very interesting. Yeah, and it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of different twists that it takes that really mm. makes it interesting to watch. It's a, a fascinating look into the history of genre film in Korea. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, uh, maybe I can tell uh, about this filmmaker because I think this okay. film with this director is very interesting. And some says um, he is Korean Mario Baba uh -huh. because he made many horror movies in his unique way. So he was born in 1916 and he died in 1982. And he studied films in Japan. At that time, many prominent people studied in Japan. We were under the Japanese colonization. So he made his first film, a cultural documentary film about Jeju Island in 1946. And then he made uh, several melodramas in 1950s. Then during 1960s, he directed several horror movies. And also he worked as a cinematographer for other directors. Uh, he was very interested in special effects. So he even made a 3D film um, with uh, the title is Devil and Beauty, interesting title, <laughs> in 1969. So Korean Film Archive and the Muni Film Museum, we actually restored this 3D movie several years ago. So if you're interested in this movie, maybe you can show in your theater someday. <laughs> so, <laughs> his horror films were commercially successful when they were released but he had not been considered one of important Korean directors because his movies made his movies were made in very low budget and horror films. And who cares about these horror films? They, they want to talk about more serious film. But I think he's one of the directors who should be rediscovered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was certainly intrigued by just watching the one film, but uh, I know there are more out there that, that we can discover. So I'm very interested in that. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for telling us about this film and how to find it and all the other 200 films that are online on YouTube. As a reminder for our audience, this film and many more have been made available for free on Kofa's YouTube channel. And I will provide a link to that in the notes of this video. So if you're interested, you can scroll down and click through there and find out uh, some Korean films for yourself. Uh, before you go, Sungji, can I ask you to take part in my little questionnaire about cinema? Yes, go ahead. All right, I've got five questions here. Uh, the first one is, what is your first cinematic memory? Oh, if I remember correctly, Sleeping <laughs> Beauty, the Disney movie. Oh, nice. Yes, I don't remember how old I was, but maybe I think I was seven or eight. And my uncle, he took me and my brother to the cinema. And I love the movie. It's a beautiful movie. <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. I think many other people have said that their first movie was a Disney movie. Yeah. It was under release, so it makes sense. Uh, was there a cinema that you went to often when you were a child that you have fond memories of? Oh, well, I grew up in Incheon, uh, uh, about 30 kilometers from Seoul. So there were many uh -huh. movie theaters, not fancy one. And, and, and my parents usually took my brother and me. And when we were a child, uh, we, uh, sometimes when my parents are very, very busy, then they just drop us there. And when the movie <laughs> they came to pick us up, and some of them were, I think, I don't know how to call it in English, a second way movie theaters, they never, uh, ran, uh, the con how can I say, recent movies, they just uh, right. rerun. How, how do you call this theater? Yeah, the second run is, is usual. Oh, okay. Thing, yeah. okay. So, and, and, and there are so many this uh, second run rate at movie theaters and showing only old movies, sometimes adult only movies. I could watch these uh, adult movies too, because right. there, there was nobody controlled us. And, and so I really watched so many movies there. So I still remember how beautiful Deborah Carr were, uh, she was in Co Bodies. <laughs> and about uh, and another memory, one day it was really raining, heavy raining. Even the school was closed. And my mom was a school teacher. So she, uh, she could go to the movies with me. And so she took me to the cinema and we watched a beautiful the Swedish movie, Elvira Madigan. Have you watched this movie? It's yeah. really beautiful. So I still remember some scenes. And 
Yeah, um, I have really um, some memory about the movie theaters and old movies. Well, I think maybe that's a, a repertory cinema. Ah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Second run tends to be films from that year, but a little bit older. Repertory mm -hmm. is like the Dryden where we have old films with new films and mix them up a bit. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So what is your favorite sensory experience when you go to the cinema? Well, I don't know how to answer this question. I just love <laughs> watching movies on big screen. Uh -huh. and, yep. Yes, and you never can catch the same thing on your uh, on your monitor and this small uh, computer monitor or TV monitor, even this iPhone. So uh, these days, uh, many people watch films on their mobile, but I really can watch a film on, on my small iPhone and I really can. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's that immersive experience. It feels like you're part of the movie as opposed mm -hmm. to just being outside of the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where do you sit? What chair do you have when you go to the cinema? Well, uh, since I watch most films at our theater right now, so I usually sit in the last row because when something comes up, I have to go out to <laughs> deal with this problem. But for the most part, I, I just I sit there and I just enjoy movies. That's, that, that's wonderful. That's <laughs> such a practical answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, last question. So is there a book that you can recommend for people to read while they're at home? Uh, maybe something about Korean film history. Oh, well, actually, I don't have much information about English books about uh, uh, Korean film in, uh, history. But can I recommend uh, the Korean Netflix show? Yeah, people watch Netflix show all the time these days, even in lockdown. And I recommend Kingdom. Have you, have you watched this movie? Oh, I, I've it's heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. If you like a plot, there's killer, you will like Kingdom. It's really fascinating uh, show. Oh, that's great. I'm going to look for that one then. Yes. Thank you again, Sungji. I so much appreciate having this conversation and be taking the time to sit down with us. Uh, again, I encourage everyone to go to Kofa's YouTube page and browse through their listings. And there's several classics available, including The Aimless Bullet, uh, The Housemaid, The Pollen of Flowers. So lots of great stuff to catch up on. Sungji, thank you so, so much. And I hope to see you again in person sometime yeah. in the future instead of just through the screens. Yeah, thank you for having me and stay well and safe. Uh, we will and you too. Thank you. Bye bye.